Hi there, it's Diane the Nursing Geek. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if it is your first time here. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the settings bank and how I've chosen to work with that. I got the idea from the book Writing Vivid Settings by Rain Hall. She strongly recommends developing a settings bank as a way to get better at writing setting in general, but also then to have a bank of settings to draw from when you need them. Hopefully then you can find something that's similar to what you are looking for, for a particular scene. So I happened to have this little notebook and decided to use a bullet journal technique. I've mentioned that in another video to make it easier to find types of settings. Um, so I have an index, which at the moment looks a little more like a table of contents. But the idea is that there will be ultimately multiple of the same types of settings. So there'll be a string of pages where you could find those types of settings, whether they're outdoors in the woods, by the water, in a restaurant. Right now they're mostly things like cafes and restaurants because that's the easiest place to go sit and just write because that's kind of expected behavior. Whereas people look at you funny in some locations when you do that. But as writers, we learn to get over that. Or we try to. Once you've picked where you're going to be, then the idea is to describe it as thoroughly as you can, using as many senses as you can. That's another reason why it's easy to end up leaning towards cafes and restaurants, because Smell is always going to be very noteworthy and taste of whatever you happen to have, whether it's just a cup of coffee or whether it's a whole meal. Taste is not always going to figure in. That's the sense that I probably find myself using the least. And I think that's probably pretty common because unless your character is eating, they're probably not paying attention to taste, even if they do have you know, a funny taste in their mouth, unless it's something that's enough to grab their attention. And it's not really to do with the setting. Here's an example of one that I did last year at this time at a Peruvian restaurant. Because I really thought it was very different from any other type of little cafe that I had done so far. mainly because of this detail. When you come in the door, directly ahead of you is a table set for one. A rose and a bud vase to the left of the plate and directly above it, an American flag folded precisely into a triangle. To the right of the plate, a business card with a note of thanks to veterans of the armed forces. When the bartender lights candles on all the tables for the evening, this table is first. The building has been other things, a deli, a supermarket, the cooler dates back to the 1960s and is still, according to the bartender, freaking cold. Just past the cooler, a hallway leads to the restrooms. The ladies room is made homey by the presence of a wooden changing table with a plush mattress. On the wall, a painting of a traditionally dressed dancer announces she is in Cusco. The bar, so this is still all visual and that's usually the place that we tend to start. The bar is made of a light stained wood while the rest of the wood in the place is dark. Behind the bar, even the racks for wine and glasses are made of dark wood. Fairy lights keep the display from being too dark to see. To the right of the bar, another piece of dark wood forms what may have been an apothecary cabinet now converted to house small succulent plants. The air is richly scented with sizzling spices that subside to a barely discernible background when nothing is being cooked. Music plays overhead, mixing with the sound of the TV over the bar. A second TV shows something else, but the volume is off. Both have closed captions turned on for those who wish to follow what is being said. So, three senses there. Got lots of visual, some smell, some sound. Touch, I completely missed, clearly. And 
I could have thrown in taste. I could have thrown in the taste of my juice because I always get this special juice that they have when I go there. Um, so, you know, I talked about the, the wood of the bar, but what did it feel like? Is it smooth? Is it sanded nice and smooth? Does it have a veneer? Is it rough? Do I worry that I'm going to get a splinter? Um, it's an old building. Maybe it is a little bit rough. So these are things that are worth noting when doing a setting for a settings bank like this, because you might not want all of those details when you decide to pull from this for a particular scene in a story, but you want all of the details there so you can choose which ones are going to be the most relevant to your scene. Because depending on the scene, the characters aren't necessarily noticing all of that. If it's a fight scene, they're noticing next to none of that. And you're just going to have to pull in the most salient details. If it's a relaxed dinner or they're sitting waiting for somebody, then they're going to notice an awful lot more. So having the maximum amount of detail when you write it should be the goal, I think. I'm a newbie at this. So have you ever tried... Um, doing some type of settings bank or other type of bank of writing that you can draw in, in the future? Let me know in the comments below because I would love to hear. And how did it work for you? That's it for today. Until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.